Right there. Dude, it's basically bald now. So, yeah, when I get a little more balls on me, I'm going to go bald. But right now, it's a one and a half. Dude, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty. Two, one and a half and a one, and then you go bald. I, I, you might as well go bald. Ain't nothing. It's just uh, well, like. The, the problem is, I don't know how you can see it. I got the reflection going. I don't know if you can see it. But this, that cavern, I call it the cavern, is getting yeah. wider. <laughs> this is getting it used to be like this now it's like this eventually and I told Dude. what I told Trisha today is I said I swore to myself years ago I'd never go Friar Tuck <laughs> and so if it gets to be Friar Tuck it's getting shaved. Dude I think you could shave it now nobody would even notice yeah. it's pretty dang low I'm getting there yeah I just cut I just was like you know what I'm gonna shave it off just gonna leave this for a little bit good thing is it grows so fast uh, well, Dax out, broke his ankle. That's well, good. I know he's going to heal. I know he's going to play again. I feel bad for him, but I know all that's going to take care of itself. He he was going. He could have signed a thirty million deal. Now, if I'm the Cowboys, I'm like with that injury. I don't know what I can give you now. I don't know what you're going to do. So. I bet he cost himself thirty to forty million total with that injury. Oh, I know. But he made a lot of money, like he said on his endorsements. I watched the interview. He said, "I'm living off every. I live only off my endorsements. I've not. I just put my my checks in the bank. So he's, he's gonna be fine. He's gonna be good. I ain't gonna uh, miss any meals, but no. I showed you right. thirty put million dollars. Put my face with this is why you do not play under franchise tags. Yep. I mean, the only person I know it's worked for is Kurt is uh, Kurt Cousins. Played two years. What he make forty six million and signed a four year eighty million deal with the Vikings and then sucked. There you go. I mean, yeah, that's he's rare. Most are others. Yeah, it's not smart. That's why you not do. at that level. You don't do that. You know. So, all right, let's get into it. I skimmed your you you gave me almost forty pages or right at forty pages. 35, 34, 35. I know, I don't be blown it. away. I skimmed it. I have not read read it. I skimmed it. I saw some parts that were just from what we wrote before. And I saw so there was a big section with some something I don't remember seeing before. You wrote a big section. Well, that's, you know, that's because – Yeah, I wrote that. I put uh, Jimmy and Richie. I brought them back in because I felt like they could come back around. He's the one that, you know – you, when you read it, you'll see it. And then I just brought in from the one other script I'd written, I just brought that one part in from daughter to niece and kind of let let him and Jack talk a little more. So just read that because hey, when you read it, where they're at now, just so it kind of ties. I saw Pops and Carlos's dad used to run a business together. Like in Far, Have you watched any Fargo yet? Oh, I got to take – I you know what I do in my spare times is write my, my novel. As soon as I get done with work, work, that's all I do now. That's like, you still got to watch Fargo. I, no, I got it all taped. Is it episodes four to nine? Yep. I'm going to watch it. I'm okay. But oh. I kind of took some of that and went – Pops and Carlos's dad work together. So Pops has been in this life too. Yeah. So right now I have Carlos sitting at the house when – when uh, Roy comes up and he's going to be at the house with pops, there's my dilemma of what needs to be said because Roy still needs to go two more jobs in my action scene mm -hmm. before he ends up back at there with pops. So that there's where I'm stuck on what to say. So that's what I need you to do. Um, Think, read that and go, what, what would that conversation be after Roy shows back up? And when you read it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I need to re – okay, I'll read it. Um, I skimmed it today. I knew you had taken some parts you'd already done, and I moved it together, and I saw it a big old chunk, with, like I said, those characters. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what this is, so I need to – Yeah, I story. added uh, Red and Big J. That's going to be Big John and, and George. Uh, big John is Big J, and then Red is, is George, yeah. but Big George. So read that, <laughs> and I think you'll kind of see – I just kind of took what you had done and just brought in some stuff that was already written 
but I just added a couple things to to uh, keep those guys. I didn't want to show Roy in every gosh dang scene. I went back and watched John Wick again and John Wick 2, and I went, okay, oh, yeah. there's a breakaway. I need to get him away, so let's do that. Yeah, you, you, it depends on the movie or it depends on the story. You know, some some stories follow a character through every scene. You see the whole story through their eyes. Yeah. And that can be doable. But if you're having multiple bad guys and intrigue and stuff like that, it gets yeah. a little more difficult to this do. This has kind of got some – to me, it's got some uh, – it's got some Guy Ritchie elements here. It's got some uh, Snatch, Lock, Stock mixed in with the John Wick because you'll see when you read it, you know, Carlos is a and his goons are one. Jimmy and Richie, you already know them. They're one. Pops is one, and basically that's it. Everybody else comes in and out. Right. So, so so that, let me let me ask you the question. You know, I think that every week I ask you a question that's got to do with the novel that I'm working on in this project. So here here's my and you asked me during the week about the girl. And that they were about to bring her in, and I had been trying to shoehorn in my novel. I, I probably, I probably ditched a thousand words over the course of last night and the day that I'd written, and I, I just, I keep it. I just copy and paste it to a little side document. So if I ever want to go back to it, I got to rewrite it just in right. case. So I, I moved about a thousand words off of the my main storyline. Because I kept writing in things that, like, I don't know why I was trying to explain so much. And when I did try to explain it, it made, like, a plot holes start happening. So do you think about that when you're writing the script? Like, if I send him there, then, then how does that affect this? Yeah. If I introduce this person, how does that affect that? Yeah. And the only reason, to answer your question, yes. And the only reason I think about it now is, is because after we talk, I know my scenes are only scenes and I know this girl is the niece isn't nothing in this script. I mean, she's a, she's, she's the crackhead who shows up and you see it when she comes in. And I think you'll, you'll like it when she comes in and gets money and leaves and pops literally tells him, Hey, she has her demons. You got yours. I got mine. You just got to be ready because she's probably going to call you knowing you're back in town. That's it. We've, we've established wh what she is, who she is. And right. you know, after she takes that dope money, something bad's going to happen to her. So now she's gone. Right. So all it did for Roy was stop two jobs and brought in. He's pissed because he's having to go do this. That's why he's mad. And you see it when he talks to pops. And that's it. Now he's back on track. But it got me the two scenes I wanted and not have to rewrite everything. I want him to kill those guys and uh, go to the houseboat and do that. That remember was all. Movie, remember that movie Rounders with yep. uh, uh, Edward Norton and Malkovich? Yeah. Matt Damon, if, I remember the movie, if I remember it correctly, at the end of the movie, they get in a jam. And Edward Norton basically just bails, and you never even see him again for the rest of the movie. That's he's just right. like, I'm not doing this. I'm out. Yeah, he's gone, and then Matt Damon has to go and fix everything. Do it all, and that, he didn't ever even come back. I mean, the whole rest of the movie, like so, the last 20, 30 minutes of the movie, Ed Norton is done. So I guess you could kind of look at it that way, like if the character kind of does what they do, just let him go, and then that's it. Because you... it, it worked in that way. Yeah, but she—I don't think just like Jimmy and Richie and all these people, I think they're like the John Wick hitmen. They're not characters. They're just fillers. So there's, <laughs> there's really nothing to like about her. There's nothing to get to know her. Uh, Jimmy and Richie are like uh, the lock stock, the, the two guys that just showed yeah. up and got killed. So there's nothing to, for you to go, Oh God, what, what, what happened? All it does is screw Roy a little bit more. Because now it takes him from the nine jobs we had, mm -hmm. and he's like, damn it, dude. You know, damn it. Because he tells Pops, why are you giving her that money? He knows she's going to go spend it on dope, and that's when he's like, hey, you do your shit. She does hers. I do mine. There ain't no questions. <laughs> so 
<laughs> it basically lent me to go, oh, hell, dude, then I don't need her. But the action scenes work for me with Roy. That right. That's what I want you to read. So she's a nobody, but all it does is screw Roy. So I, I kind of looked at it like it's no different than him going in a crack house and killing somebody and having to talk to him. Yeah. Now you know it. All, the only thing he did was throw a monkey wrench in his jobs. Well, on my novel, I kept trying to bring in – I'd gotten to a, a transition point, where, and I kept trying to bring in these characters at the tradition point, and I don't know why. And it's, I felt like I was trying to explain – you know, kind of like in movies and stuff. It's like, I don't need this. I know over the course of a movie, that main character, I know John Wick at some point has got paid. I know yeah. at some point he's got to drive to the place. I know at some point he's got to go eat. But I don't have to see all that for the, that movie to work. But sometimes when I'm writing, it's like they went and peed. They went. <laughs> I got to like go through every little detail. And I have to remind myself, whoa, 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 whoa. Just tell the story. If it's not part of the story, just take it out and just get back to well, the story. Was that me and you? Was that me and you talking when, or somebody telling us or something? They're going, the audience is not that stupid, right? So when you see them leave a house, and the next transition is they cut and they're pulling into the driveway, you yeah. in your head know they drove that far, right, right, right. But there's no reason for you to ride that far. So well, and that's I think what you, you can get away with that. Yeah, I remember when we talked with the Irishman. With the narrow, there's a scene when he goes. If you ain't seen it, well, I watch it. Yeah, I watch so it. If it, somebody if watched you guys it, had, yeah, it. it's been out a while. You should have seen it now. Anyway, he goes to go to whack uh, Jimmy Hansel, and they ride the airport. Ever. He gets into the plane. He flies yeah. the plane. He gets off the plane. He gets in the car. He drives to the place. It's like, did I need to see every? And then when he's done, he does the same thing. Comes back. It's like, and we all knew that. Like, if if you watch The Irishman, you at this point should know what this story is about. Well, they, they went to great pain to the whole deal. And I'm like, this movie's like three and a half hours long. You could This is like 10 minutes right here. I mean, I they could have cut that out. I'm with you. They didn't have no reason to show that. And I mean, Goes to the club. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. Why am I sitting in the car with Joe? Hell, even, even them driving with Joe Pesci and the women. I'm like, it's a lot. God, dang. That just make no. That's a. a that's just a lot of, of stuff, to me. But, well, I have to remind myself. I don't think you do as much as I do. I think you're a little more. You just get right into the. You're more impatient, so you just get right into it. I get more. I overthink it, and I'm like, I write in too many fluffs. Things. Well, you're. You got to remember, you're developing a character. I'm. I'm trying to kill him, so I, I don't really care if. They, <laughs> You know, I don't care if they brush their teeth that morning, Hoke, as long as they can go through that wall, be right. shot and go through that wall, which I think sometimes is a downfall. But I think that's how we that's how we balance our right. deal out, you know, because you will read this and go, hmm, maybe it works. Maybe it don't. Maybe you add this. Maybe you take this yeah. away. You don't need that. You need this. Blah, blah, blah. And then for me. I'm like this. Okay, well, that's fine because as soon as she's dead, my action starts. Yeah, 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 yeah. as long as – when it all gets down to it, which, which you know, both of us, we meet in the middle, and what matters is the audience. As long as the audience isn't scratching their head wondering what in the hell just happened, yes. as long as you can prevent that, then you're good. That That's the key. I feel like when you said that, I needed to introduce her for the split second. Yeah. And when you read it, I think you will go, okay, you did a good enough job for me to know something's going to happen to her. Right. It's, it's too, you, there's no twist. Remember we talked about Roy's on a job and he's going, there's no twist here that the audience doesn't, the audience is going to go, Oh, well, this bitch is going to die. I guarantee it. Uh -huh. And they're right. <laughs> they're, I'm, not, I'm not trying to fool them. They're right. Yeah. And, but what do you think? What do you think when you, when like you're writing your novel now, what do you feel like when you go, shit, I just threw away a thousand pages I don't care. Or, I, or I just posted away a, a thousand pages. Do you feel like, okay, the reader, it's better for the reader or it's 
I put it in too much. I'm I'm too wordy here. They're going to get bored of reading it. Well, yeah, I think it's all that. I mean, well, if you write, if if in that if that part you have to delete has got a really good line in it or some really cool thing happens, that's the reason I copy and paste it to another document. So if I ever want, just in case, I want to go back to that line. I can't remember what it was. Cause I did write. I mean, that happened. I wrote a really funny line, but it doesn't work anymore. I, I, with what I took out, I couldn't keep it because it, it was related to what had happened. So I took it out. So uh, my main concern is, I mean, you're writing a novel. And I, this is new territory for me, and I'm not a big reader. I'm just trying to get the story out of my head more than anything else. And uh, I'm just like, when I'm reading this book, now I'm starting to get bored. So obviously yeah. I've got off the story. So if I get, I need to get back into the story. So I don't care if I don't care if a whole day is wasted. And if I did something wrong, it as long as it's out of there, yeah, I gotta fix it. I really, I'm not gonna keep a whole day's worth of work just in, in this in the book not being any good. There, the movie there's not being any good. There's where I'm at when I call you. Yeah, and I go. Should I? And you go, I don't know. Just do it, and then we'll figure it out. There's where I'm at. It's in my head. I I know we need more, and I already have it written. I already have it. I had that whole thing written, yeah. and that was just two scenes out of that. And I went, this will work, and it will add to Roy in his screwed-up situation. Right. And then – I am like you. If you go, I'm going to take that out because I know what could be better. I'll be like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. It, the, the final product is more important than my own. Yeah. Word. You wrote a thousand words. Yeah. It, I mean, it just, that trumps anything about me. It's the final product. I mean, you know, like we're, if we shoot a day where the, if we shoot a whole day and then it's just crap, Boy. I mean, how many times have we done that? Yeah, I mean, if you lost the day, I mean, it sucks. But I mean, I mean, you can't you can't put off a bad product if you don't want to waste a day. Yeah, I'm with you there. Well, <laughs> that's I mean, a baker didn't give you a cake that's falling and burnt and everything else. Go, well, I made it, so here it is. I mean, you just, <laughs> it's the same thing. You just don't work that way. I agree with that. That I do totally agree with that. I I'm more excited about doing this and shooting it correctly right. than just shooting it and getting it out. I think right. that's what you just said. I don't want to be the, the baker who made the cake and went, yeah, I didn't ice it, but hey, it's done. So here, and they go, well, if you take some time and ice it, I'd like it more. Okay. Well, we, you and I have done that. We've made that cake before. Oh, and, and now a few times you get a little older and, and you're not quite as jacked up as we used to be. And we used to be, we were like, Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Well, now you yeah. get a little calmer, you get a little more wise, and a little more wisdom. It just, it just better. It's just better to make make it good and take your time. And knowing more, I, knowing, knowing, I don't need as much now. I know what I need. I know what's going to make it work. I yeah. know the shots I need instead of, you know. So, I'm excited. I want you to read it. You'll read it. But I'm back to Fargo. Okay. For me, as a guy that doesn't watch series, right. I watch The Shield and, and uh, I've watched Fargo and that's it. Yeah. For me, it is the slowest. That's not good. It's the slowest. Even from Billy Bob's days, Fargo 1, 2, and 3, it's the, the slowest and most drawn out. But it's so well done, I'm never bored. I'm, oh. never, I'm never bored. I thought you were going to say the opposite. <laughs> I'm never bored. And I told Stephanie that last week. I said, it's got so much character in it. And, dude, you're going to love episode three with the nurse and the dude from uh, Rushmore. can't remember his name. The about. main guy in yeah. the car. You're, you're, you're going to – you, Hoke, will laugh and love right. that scene. But it's so slow, but it's so well done. And – I find myself going, that's what I want. That's what I want. I want to make sure that those long shots and those shots you enjoy, you're not bored because yeah. you know it's leading up to something. 
and that's where I've always been. Hey, hurry up. Let's get over here. Get, get, get him in the house. Just get him in the house. Once he gets in the house, he'll shoot everybody. Well, why'd he go to that house? Oh, it don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. <laughs> he just went over there and killed everybody. So it, I find myself going, man, I, I, I enjoy that. Yeah. Crazy. Well, For you I mean, people not watching Fargo, watch it. It's a great series. Well, I know. I think episodes four to nine. Four is tonight. I will catch up. It's on my. It's on my to do list. That's one of the shows I didn't want to get behind. On. Oh, I catch up. I'll, I'll catch up this week for sure. Because I, I I write as much as I can, but I'll I'll watch at least an episode of that and catch up. For you you will like it. Yeah. And what another thing that I'm liking now is uh, where I stopped and sent you that. I know where I want to go. I yeah. really do. I know where I want to go, but I am not writing it until we have that part fixed. Why? Okay. Because it helps me think and put it on the shelf and not screw myself in the head and overthinking it or overdoing anything that when I pull it back off and I read it and I go, Oh yeah, I remember exactly. Oh yeah. Now, Oh, that's where I want to go. Yeah. That, that, Oh, I did that Saturday when I got done writing and sent it to you. I was like, I'm done. I'm not going to try to write another <laughs> scene. I'm not going to do nothing. Well, so I was excited about All that. All right. Well, then I'll, then I'll, uh, I guess I skimmed it earlier today. Oh, I don't mean you got to rush. I'm just saying oh, I enjoy the patient time, the part of waiting. Well, what I do is with the novel. But hurry up. Yeah. I that was <laughs> what I do with the novel is I get to a point that I had in my head and I wrote an outline deal. It's really, I mean, it's notes that nobody else could decipher but me. Right. Uh, this outline I wrote. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> if I get to a certain point where I'm pretty much got in my head, I just got to write it out. I, I write it, and then when it's done, and I call it a day. Then when I lay there in bed, I start thinking of how do I see the movie in my head for the next part. And that's what kind of was screwing me up. Is I kept trying to like force the issue with this next part that I finally figured out today. And then I'm like, dude, it's like a movie, and then you're an editor. You need to cut this other part. You're trying to shoot for something that don't work. Yeah, so I know you're the same way. You just picture it in your head. You play it like a movie in your head. And you just keep editing it and editing it and editing it in your head until you finally get what you like. <laughs> that, that's it, that's exactly right. I I, I find it. I, I I know me and you. You're the only person I know that does that. Is as we're writing it, or I'm as I'm typing it. I literally picture myself sitting in the middle of the theater and it's on the screen and I'm watching it. And if I go, Oh, it does not work. I'm like, you scratch that out. Put what I see in there works. We've always done that though. Speaking of theater, so I, know oh. I, I need to bring up something before we close out. So we've been going bring to the up. movies pretty much weekly. We went and Here saw we war with grandpa Friday. Who's in that? Rob De Niro, listen oh. to Rob De Niro, Uma Thurman, Rob Riggles, Christopher Walken, Jane Seymour, and uh, uh, Cheech, Cheech Marin are all in this, and plus the kids and everything else. So, pretty good cast. It was cute. I mean, we normally move, not normally a movie I would go see, but with COVID, you right. know, a lot of options. I wouldn't check that out. Right. It is cute. But at the end of the movie, they play like the bloopers and all that kind of stuff. There's a scene where they have this dodgeball fight, the, the the older people versus the kids. And they green screened that dodgeball fight. So they have shots of Jane Seymour and she's on a green screen and there's and they're filming it. And there's De Niro and he's on a green screen. So so anyway, so I just thought it was funny you get a kick out of it that I guess De Niro's gotten so old that he can't even do a dodgeball where he's got to do a green screen. <laughs> I think he's like 70, 70 something, close to eighty. Yeah. Well, what do you think about Hollywood closing? Regal. They they say they're all open back up. They're just shutting it down until the movies or the release. Really? Oh, okay. I'm hoping so. It's getting That's dark what they out say. here. Yeah, you know that goes. Yeah, I can tell. Well, Damon Crumb posted. He was like, "This is it for uh, Regal." So I was like, "Holy crap!" My understanding was Regal and the, the parent company that owns it owns another chain too. Cine, I'm not sure what's called. They said they're going to shut it down. Until all the big movies start coming out again, because right now they're not getting enough business to make it work, and because of everything got pushed into the next year, all the big movies, yeah, are just gonna open up next year when the when the movies. Oh, all right, good deal. All right, I hope but, you guys enjoyed the show. 
That's what they said. They might change. Just like the Tides are supposed to play Tuesday, and we'll see. Hope you guys don't lose a draft pick or a forfeit because of this stuff. I don't see how they can. Because the Pats have had to have two games move. And, uh, uh, I mean, the only reason they would do it is because – of that practice. They supposedly practice when they were pumping. Uh, they did. They went to a field and practice, but I, I don't think they can get them for the game moving because they've had to move. Like they, they put the whole list out today. There's a list of like, yeah, games got moved. there's a game playing Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. night. Yeah. That's them. Right. Oh yeah. It's him. All right. Well, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show next week. I'm hoping we're, we'll see what happens next week. We'll see what happens this week. I bet we make progress because I'm in pretty good zone riding. So I just gotta just do yours for a little bit. Hours, bitch. Hour, you know what I mean. I know. <laughs> want the audience? Want the audience to know? There ain't no I. Hour. I didn't even work those other hours when before I get back to the other hours. <laughs> <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> that sounds that better. <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'll holler at you this week. All right. Sounds good. All right. Bye. Bye.